Learning Excel shortcuts can often feel overwhelming. There's hundreds of them, and even if you memorize multiple keystrokes, they only do one action. One of the few exceptions to that is GoToSpecial, where you get access to 15 shortcuts using just one button. So let me show you seven real-world examples of how to use it. First up, suppose we want to check if we have any blank values in this data set, but it's not that easy to spot as it's quite a lot of data. And by the way, you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. Instead of checking manually row by row, what we'll do is press Ctrl A to select the whole area. And then to go to the go to special area, you can either go over to find and select and click on go to special or the shortcut there is simply Ctrl G. Within this area, you can choose to go to a specific cell, but for us, we're only looking for blank values. So we'll go to this special section. The shortcut for that is Alt S. And here we want to choose blanks. Press on OK, and you'll notice it's highlighted all of the blanks in this data set. From here, we can easily just highlight them in yellow if we don't want to make any changes right now. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl Z to go back. And in this formula bar, I can just say NA. If I press Ctrl Enter there, you notice that it actually fills it in for all of the different cells. That's not all though. What if instead of saying NA, I just wanted to take whatever is above that cell, so on the cell above. Well, for that, I can change that NA and just put an equal sign. For this first one right here, it would just be the cell above. Now to apply that for all the other cells, it's Ctrl Enter. So you'll notice this one does the 390, this one says iPad, and all of them just follow what it says above. Awesome, we've just seen how to detect blanks and edit them, but that's just one of the many shortcuts go to special offers. For instance, over here, suppose we want to find if any cells have conditional formatting, like maybe they're highlighted in a different color. Obviously, right now, it doesn't seem to be the case. But if you change this value, let's say I make it a bigger number, like 18,000, then all of a sudden, you'll notice that it populates in red. Something like this can be quite confusing as you won't know why it got formatted differently all of a sudden. So if you want to check if they have any conditional formatting, what you can do is press Ctrl G again. And then if you'll remember, the shortcut is Alt S to go to the special area. And within this area, we're now looking for conditional formats. Press on OK. And you notice that it says this whole revenue column actually has conditional formatting in it. Now that we know this and the whole area has been highlighted, we can either choose to remove the conditional formatting just by going to clear rules and clear rules from selected cells, or simply leave it if this is what we want. Great, now moving up to the third example, and here we have a dashboard with a lot of different shapes in it. So you notice that each of these are shapes. That said, if you want to select all of the shapes, maybe to move it a bit lower down, you'll notice that you can't do that very effectively in Excel. Even if I press like Ctrl A to select everything, it's not actually selecting any of the shapes. So the manual way to do this would be to press the Ctrl key. So I'll select this one, and with the Ctrl key, I'll be able to select multiple, but that's very tedious, especially if you have a large dashboard like this. Instead, we'll go to go to special again. So it's Ctrl G, and then Alt S to go to the special area. Within it, we're looking for objects this time, that's the same as the shapes. Press on OK, and you'll notice that it selected all of them at once. So now I can easily move everything down or to the right as I see fit. Awesome, now moving up to scenario number four, and in financial modeling, you might be aware that when you have blue numbers like this, these mean that they've been hard-coded, so they are manual inputs, whereas black numbers like these are all formulas. So you'll notice inside this one, which is in black, it's a formula, whereas down over here, where it's in blue, it's just a hard-coded number, meaning that someone's manually typed it. That's an important distinction in financial modeling when creating something like an income statement, because it means that the blue figures are ones that you are able to change manually, whereas the black ones are ones that you shouldn't touch. So if you want to make sure the colors are right and there's no mistakes at all, we can do that by going to the go to special again. And this time we're going to look for constants. So press on OK here. And this should basically select all of the areas that are blue values. So you'll notice though that some of these down over here and these here in the middle are actually in black. But if we go inside of the cell, you'll notice that this isn't a formula. 
Same thing with these two other ones. So that's clearly an error and they should change to a blue color for these ones right here. And then same thing down below, this 25% for these first three ones seems to be a hard-coded value. So we should change those too. Speaking of financial modeling, if you're interested in learning accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling in Excel, I'd recommend you check out our complete finance and valuation course. In the course, first we'll cover financial statement analysis, using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we'll get into financial modeling through a three-statement model. After that, we'll begin the valuation phase where you learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Apple, looking at their real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present your investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Something that's very embarrassing to have in your Excel file are errors. For instance, if you receive a data set from somebody else, it can be sometimes hard to spot the different errors, especially if you have a lot of data. Luckily, with GoToSpecial, we can identify them very easily. So again, it's Control G, Alt S. And from here, we're looking specifically at errors. So we'll click on formulas. And here, we're gonna just untick on all the options and simply have errors ticked. Now I'm gonna press on OK. And you'll notice that it selected all of the different errors. And again, we can obviously highlight them or potentially a better approach is on the first one, just put NA, Control Enter, and all the other ones are gonna change to NA2. Nice, and as we were going through the error example just now, you might have noticed under go to special, we have a lot of stuff for formulas. So let's suppose right in here, we wanna find out which of these cells is a formula. For that, I can press Control G again, Alt S, and you'll notice we have this whole formulas area. Previously, we unticked on three of these, but let's say we're happy with how it is right now. I'm gonna press on OK. So all of these here seem to be formulas. We have them all highlighted and you'll notice that it has this 1.05 in it. So that means that it's 5% growth for each of these values. That said, if you wanted to change that, we can just select the whole area, control H. And from here, find what, wherever it says 1.05 and we wanna replace it with, let's say a 7% growth rate. We could do it like this press on replace all. It's made all the replacements, okay, and we can close out of that. That said, in an ideal scenario, you should have the number hard-coded somewhere else like this, so it's much easier to make the changes instead of just adding it manually inside of the formula. In more complex financial models, it can also be useful to see what's inside of each formula, and for that, you can just use the shortcut control, and I think this is called a grave accent, like this, where you can see all of the cells and the formulas that each one has. Other than that, press Control Grave Accent again to close that. If you wanted to see only what one particular cell has and where it's linking to, let's say, we can just click on it and go to Formulas and from here, click on Trace Precedence to see exactly where the data is coming from. Seems like it's from the previous cell and this one down below. Now, one of my personal favorite use cases is for notes or comments. Typically, if you receive an Excel file from a manager or somebody else and it's got some comments like this one over here saying follow up next week, they might not be that easily visible to you, especially if it's a large data set. So what you can do is press Ctrl G again, Alt S, and here we want to select all of the notes. Press on OK there, it selected them and I can easily change the color from here so that it's easier for me to see. If that's not a problem for you though, I can press Ctrl Z and you just wanna get rid of all of them, just right click on one of them and go to delete note. When you do that, you'll notice that it gets rid of all of the ones in the data set. If this notes feature is new to you and you're curious about how to add one, you just simply need to right click and go to new note. The shortcut for that is actually pressing the shift F2 key. The crazy part is that so far, we've only seen about seven different scenarios of what this go to special tool can do. But as you can see right here, we actually have a lot of different features, so feel free to play around with them. You might not be aware, but Excel's recently been releasing tons of new features, and if you wanna find out which are the best ones, you should watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. 
hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.